Imagination bridges the gap between what you know to be true and what you're actually experiencing. In 1979, Ellen Langer, a psychologist and author of Counterclockwise, uh, did a really unorthodox experiment uh, proving the power of the imagination. And what she and four of her graduate students did is they put an advertisement in a local newspaper for what they described as a study on reminiscing. And they ended up selecting 16 participants, all in their late 70s or early 80s. They divided them into two groups of eight, an experimental group and a control group. Prior to the experiment, they consulted leading uh, geriatricians to find measurable biological markers of aging so that they could gauge their results. And amazingly, they were told by all these different, pe these different experts that there were and still are none. Think about that. So, for the sake of the experiment, they tested weight, dexterity, flexibility, eyesight, and memory. They took photographs to later evaluate the appearance of change, and they administered a psychological self-evaluation. They found uh, an old monastery in Peterborough, New Hampshire, that seemed what they thought was timeless enough for them to actually replicate the world of 1959. They carefully studied what life in 1959 was like and created that setting in this monastery down to the most minute detail. The experimental group was told to live as if it were 1959, with every conversation being in 1959 present tense. They were told not to bring any current magazines or newspapers, books, family photos, but they did bring photos of their younger selves, which they shared with other participants. They were asked to write a brief autobiography as though it were 1959 and were told that they weren't to act like it was that year, but just to let themselves be who they were in that year. The control group went to the same exact location one week later, and they were told to discuss things that took place in 1959, but their bios were to be written in past tense and their photos were of their current selves, and they were told to reminisce about 1959 rather than allowing themselves to actually be there. Interestingly enough, by the second day, all members of both groups were actively involved in serving meals and cleaning up afterwards, even though all of them had been extremely dependent on caregivers before the retreat. After the week, both groups were retested and showed improvements in hearing, memory, height, weight, gait, posture, joint flexibility, manual dexterity, but the experimental group showed greater improvement. On intelligence tests, 63% of the experimental group improved their scores compared to 44% of the control group. Finally, volunteers who were unaware of the experiment's purpose were asked to compare photos taken before and after the study, and these objective observers judged that all of the experimental participants looked noticeably younger at the end of the study. She goes on to say this, the study shaped not only my view of aging, but also my view of limits in a more general way for the next few decades. Over time, I've come to believe less and less that biology is destiny. It's not primarily our physical selves that limit us, but rather our mindset about our physical limits. If a group of elderly adults could produce such dramatic changes in their lives, so too can the rest of us. To begin, we must ask if any of the limits we perceive as real actually exist. You've learned that your thoughts create and your emotions create, and that they must be in agreement in order for you to be an unobstructed channel through which your miracle can flow. Imagination is the thread that weaves them together and sets them ablaze with passion. In 2014, scientists filmed for the first time ever a brilliant flash of light that sparks at the very moment a human sperm cell makes contact with an egg. This spark is kind of like the fire of imagination touching and fully uniting the thought and feeling realms. It brings forth manifestation. What you desire to see without, you must see within. In the last class, you learned about the tremendous significance of the heart. But did you know that the Bible calls the imagination the eyes of your heart? I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling, that is, the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that He finds in us, His holy ones.
I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. That's Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. The word translated here as imagination is also translated as innermost or heart. Imagination aligns the eyes of your heart with your natural eyes so that faith becomes sight. Both Abraham and Sarah at one point expressed doubt and unbelief in God's promises. We all know that from Scripture. Yet, they were both praised for their faith, faith in Hebrews 11. So what happened in between? You learned in the last class that God breathed His breath into them, changing their names. But God also had Abraham behold the sand. We see that in Genesis 13, 16. And He had him look at the stars. That's Genesis 15, 5. So that his spiritual eyes could begin to see what his natural eyes were beholding. And Abraham's not the only Bible character who saw stars. We know the story, Genesis 37, and in that story, we see that Joseph dreamed about the sun, the moon, and the stars bowing down to him. He knew that this represented members of his family, and after many years and many trials, that is exactly what happened. What your spiritual eyes see will be. Yeshua demonstrated this truth by doing the miraculous things He saw the Father doing. John 5.19 says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself but what He sees the Father do. For whatever He does, the Son also does in like manner. So Yeshua wasn't speaking figuratively when He said He saw the Father. He saw with the eyes of his heart, and he did this not out of his divinity, but out of his humanity. He was the first fruit of a fully mature son, demonstrating to us what's possible and available to us. His sacrificial death on the cross made it available, and his earthly life demonstrated what it looked like. A lot of times when I or somebody else at our church, All Things Restored, starts teaching something that might be a new concept for people, we'll say we're framing this up for them. So it might be some time before people are actually able to really, really comprehend and step into the reality of what's being taught. But we're creating that framework that makes it possible for them to do that. Psalm 103.14 says, For He knows our frame, He remembers that we're dust. The word frame here is the Hebrew word Y-A-Y-T-S-E-R, which is Strong's uh, H3336. And it means form, framework, or imagination. So this verse is literally stating that God understands your framework and that your imagination is the framework of your life. This Hebrew word actually originates from a really closely related Hebrew word, uh, Y-A-W-T-S-A-R, and it means this, to form, fashion, frame of human activity, of divine activity, of creation, of individuals at conception to be formed, to be created. Your imagination is the framework for your life, forming and fashioning you as a potter forms the clay. For through the eternal and living Word of God, you've been born again, and this seed that He planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside of you forever. Remember, it all began with the thoughts of the Father. His Word is the incorruptible seed, and your heart is the womb. The Word of the Father is implanted, and Holy Spirit broods over that Word with His and your holy passion. Persistent and consistent imagination nurtures and nourishes that seed until it's birthed. What you conceive, whether carnal or spiritual, will be birthed, manifested. For miracles come from within, not without. When it's birthed, others might see it like some suddenly, but you're going to know that it was conceived in faith and nurtured in your spiritual womb by your imagination.